It's Wednesday, everybody. Wednesday morning. Live. Live on a Wednesday. Wednesday Rama. Okay. So my alarm usually goes off at 5.30. And this morning my alarm was my dog. Got five. I think he heard a siren. So I'm awake. You awake? Had a couple cups of coffee. Had a piece of toast with some of that healthy peanut butter that doesn't taste as good as the craft stuff with all the sugar in it. Yeah, I'm awake. Hope you guys are awake too. <laughs> God bless your day. And uh, today as we examine the Bible, let's, uh, let's start with a word of prayer. Father, for uh, Sandra and all those that we love that are commuting today, I ask you, Jesus, to take care of them as they drive. Thank you for your word. I thank you that it is alive and active and sharper than any sword. And as it can cut through the uh, self-defensiveness that we have, and may it cut through the pretense, may it cut through the depression, may your word cut through the, uh, the darkness that we all experience as winter approaches, and may it bring light to our soul through your spirit. I thank you for every person watching, and thank you, Lord, that you love us. You accept us in Jesus, and we, we worship you. We love you back. I thank you that you love every person watching. Amen. So, folks, uh, good morning. Um, we're going to be looking at Psalm 15 today um, on Hope at 7. And uh, this psalm starts off uh, by seeming like it's not giving me hope, but it is, so... Here we go. Psalm 15. Who may worship in your sanctuary, Lord? Who may enter your presence on your holy hill? Those who lead blameless lives and do what is right, speaking the truth from sincere hearts. Those who refuse to gossip or harm their neighbors. Those who do not speak evil of their friends. Those who despise flagrant sinners and honor the faithful followers of the Lord. And keep their promises even when it hurts. Those who lend money without charging interest and who cannot be bribed to lie about the innocent. Such people will stand firm forever. Now, um, when, you, when you look at that and you, and you see David's initial question, who can worship in your sanctuary, Lord? Who can enter your presence on your holy hill? Who can live in your presence? Well, um, it says those who are blameless. Scripture is... Um, full of human beings, and not one of them, except Jesus the God-man, um, is flawless. We, we see that even with great saints uh, that we um, venerate, like, like Abraham and David, who, who killed Goliath, and we all know that those men were flawed and sinful, and some of them did uh, worse stuff than you and me. For instance, uh, Abraham... He uh, prostituted his wife out to Pharaoh in Egypt to save his own hide. He allowed his wife to be um, taken into Pharaoh's house as uh, into one of his, the women in his harem to save his own hide because he was afraid that Pharaoh would kill him. And here, this Abraham, the father of faith, the founder of Israel. And so you see all these people, and, and then you look at me, the guy before you, who looks in the mirror and uh, realizes that next to a holy God, he is a very sinful man. And uh, as David said, my sin is always before me because we know who we are. We can write our own indictment. And um, so when David says, uh, who can go into God's presence, those that are blameless, uh, and I go, well, I guess that precludes Bob Evans from entering the presence of God and being able to live with God and have God live with him because I am fully understanding that I'm a sinful man, especially when I just look at a great and holy God. So one thing that David fully understood was that he was addressing um, a God who was holy. And, and so David asks, who can come into your presence? Well, David answers his own question, somebody who is holy like the Lord. Well, David knew he wasn't holy, and uh, I know I'm not holy, and you know you're not holy on our own. So what do we do if we want God to live with us, if we want to live with God, if we want to live with God forever in heaven? What do we do? Well, 
Um, we know that God cannot abide sin. Sin is all that we do that is wrong against the moral code, the moral law of the universe. Deep down, we know what those those laws are. They're in our nature. We know that um, we don't lie, we don't cheat, we don't steal. Um, and David even says, God's presence is for those who keep their promises. Well, I've broken promises in my life. So have you. So we who know we're a sinner, what is our hope this morning? Because it can't be in our performance. Because, you know, it, you know how they say you're batting 300? You're lucky if you hit three balls out of 10, right? Well, um, who can worship in God's holy sanctuary? Who can dwell in God's presence? Well, who can visit God while they're on earth? And who can get God to like them? Put it that way. The good news is this. We can be made blameless through Jesus. He can forgive all our sin. He can make us spotless in the presence of God. That's called justification. And the Bible says that those who believe in him are justified. And it comes through faith in him being perfect. Because Jesus was the only man who could walk into the sanctuary of God in heaven. And he can take us by the hand and walk us into God's presence once we're fully forgiven by him. Because back in the day when someone broke the moral code, you guys remember what happened, right? There was a sacrifice of an innocent animal. An innocent animal died in Bob Evans' place, if I was somebody that lived back then. But every year, you had to make another sacrifice. And it never got rid of my sin. It never fully justified me. But the Bible says that um, the eternal option we have is Jesus Christ, that he is the Lamb of God. So being that I'm a sinner, do I have any options to get in on eternal life? Um, where I'm not alone, where I can get God to be with me when I'm a screw-up. In one sense, uh, David's speaking about the Old Covenant where there's the law and we broke it, so what do we do? In our sense... Um, now, today, we are part of the new covenant because Jesus Christ came, he lived, he lived a perfect life, he died a death I deserve to give me what I don't deserve, and that's full justification and love from God. In the old covenant, the way to get right was blood sacrifice. In the new covenant, the way to get right was blood sac is blood sacrifice, the sacrifice of Jesus. That's why Jesus came. Because Hebrew says the sacrifices year after year couldn't ultimately pay for my sin or prepare me to enter God's presence. Enter Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. How beautiful is that? That's who Jesus is. He takes away the sin of the world. The new covenant with Jesus gives us a different ground for blessing and relationship with God. The finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross under this new covenant Faith, rather than performance, is the basis for blessing. Faith in Jesus, rather than us performing. Because you and I can't perform. So we're welcome into God's presence this morning. Through Christ, we all get to enter into God's presence. And God with us, even better, God in us. This is cool. When Peter um, was forgiven by Jesus for denying him three times, his best friend, one of Jesus' best friends, denied him three times. Peter was forgiven for that. Jesus went back to heaven. God's Spirit came down upon the disciples. God now was with them. And here's the good news. Peter preached to the crowd, this is how you can go into God's presence. This is how to get God's presence in you. Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Do you see the good news here? All it takes is that I admit that I don't deserve to be someone who lives in God's presence. And I am a sinner. And I say I repent of that. Lord, I turn away from my sin. Peter says, repent, which means turn away from your sin. And then Peter says, turn to God. That's what repentance is. Turning, switching directions. And then be baptized. Be fully immersed. Immerse your life in Jesus Christ. That's why we're baptized on the outside to show that we're fully immersed in him and his forgiveness and his grace. And we've given our life to him. So believe and be baptized, Jesus said. Maybe you need to be baptized. Maybe you need to 
um, ask me when we can schedule your baptism. Anytime, anytime. We've got we've got a, um, a baptismal tank that we can fill up. Jesus said, all your sins will be forgiven. Peter said, all your sins will be forgiven. And you will receive the gift of God's Holy Spirit. So not only, folks, are we allowed to come to church, are we allowed to... Um, dwell in God's presence here and live with him forever but God will live in us Peter says he says repent turn away from your sin turn to God and you will receive the gift of God's Holy Spirit God himself will live in you now you who were a sinful person who was a sinful person is now the dwelling place of God that to me is just magnificent you live in him and he lives in you this is the good news now, no matter where you are, your spirit and his spirit are together forever. God will never leave you or forsake you. You get to dwell in God's presence and he dwells in you. You're now forgiven. You're justified. You are now the dwelling place of God. David says, who may enter the sanctuary and worship the Lord? And who can enter your presence on the holy hill? Now, we through Jesus are the sanctuary of God. And not only can we enter his presence, but his presence is in us. Amazing truth. And I close today with Hebrews chapter 10. God says, I will never again remember your sins and your lawless deeds. And when sins have been forgiven, there is no need to offer any more sacrifices. You're accepted by God. So dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus Christ. By his death, Jesus opened a new and living way through the curtain to the most holy place. And since we have this great high priest Jesus who rules over God's house, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him to save. For our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean and our bodies have been washed with pure water. Let us hold tightly without wavering to this hope that we affirm. For God can be trusted to keep his promise. There's good news, folks. Jesus is with us. He's in us. He's forgiven us. We're in his presence forever. There's no longer a need for us to try and get into God's good books. We just are because of Jesus Christ. So let's have a prayer. Lord, I pray that folks would just trust your word, which can be fully trusted, that I will as well, that Jesus you are with us now as we go to work, as we try and live a life where we shine for you. Thank you that you wipe the sin stains off of us as we go out this morning, that your mercy is new this morning, that your grace is abundant. So Lord, as we go and live a life of grace and truth like your son Jesus did when he walked these streets, we pray that, Lord, we will be a blessing to those around us today. Strengthen my brothers and sisters. Give us that great hope in you. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, amen. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you and give you peace. You guys have a good Wednesday. We'll see you tomorrow on Hope at 7 a.m. Take care.